so this is interesting, though, because I think you and I would both be what we would call hereditarians. That is, we think that the IQ gaps are probably substantially genetically caused, not yeah. entirely. In, yeah. in a single lifetime, short span. Um, yeah, sure. Over, over the centuries, I don't know. I mean, that was that was one of the things that impressed me about like James Flynn mm -hmm. uh, his research coming as a man of the left was oh hey you know how they standardized IQ tests so that they're pretty culturally fair across space and culture well they forgot to do it across time and right. it turns out that the raw IQ scores are rising why is that and I'm still not that sure I got some theories but um, mm -hmm. But what, what it pointed out, suggested to me was that, it, you know, life can be very long and and the centuries are even longer than that. And things can change. Sure. History is really complicated. So what the future is, I don't know. But on the other hand, over, the, in, over a couple of generations, eh, I mean, when... I got interested in social statistics because education was the debate topic uh, in 1972. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had to start reading a lot of social science at age 13. And I noticed back then that um, the, the general ranking of school performance kind of went number one, uh, Orientals. Number two, Caucasians. Number three, Chicanos. Number four, Blacks. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, everything's changed. Uh, in 2023, 50 years later, number one is Asians. Number two is whites, with a small w. <laughs> number yes. three is Latinx. And number four <laughs> is Blacks with Capitalized. a capital B. <laughs> so it's all different. <laughs>